the mood in the studio tonight yeah. good evening Mzansi your primetime trio is in the building to serve you the latest trenders top trending topics and you're tuned right into Trending SA right here on SABC3 I'm of course Lisa Hotlavi and I'm coming to you with the A team minus Mr. T oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you next to me we have the host of the most radio DJ Mo Flava yes I've made it to Wednesday. What could possibly go wrong from uh, here? Huh? I, 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 what speaking, could possibly go wrong? I don't know. But coming from your woman crush Wednesday, I don't know. We have the king of consist consistency. The <laughs> consistency is not coming with the English, but it will improve. The emperor himself, my black. Hi. Can we please wrap this up, whatever we're doing right here? All my colleagues and people at my stature are at a funeral right now. So let's finish this up. <laughs> right. On that note, it's time for Top Trends. Hurry up. <laughs> Speaking of people like my Blair, hashtag prisoner popped up on my timeline. And I'm going to stop you right there because I don't think it's anywhere close to what you're thinking. There's a rather graphic video spreading like wildfire on the socials, candidly portraying sexual activity between an official and an inmate at the Ngome Correctional Center in KZN. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, some of us made it to Wednesday, but some people are going to struggle to get to the end of the week. And as expected, Twitter had a lot to say. Aura Mather said this, It still surprises me, till this day, that people record themselves having SEX. Like, why? Sex, more sex. A lot of sex tapes <laughs> always leak online, but people just don't want to learn. Hashtag prisoner, I, I didn't want to say it twice. <laughs> Another one, this one's from Vida. The only wrong a woman did was to have sex at work because it is unethical. But otherwise, if she had cheated on someone, there is nothing wrong with it. Men do it all the time, and women have to accept it as standard in relationships. Hashtag prisoner. Off the bat, uh, I have got a million and one questions. But I just want to ask you guys on the table, did you see the video? Like a hundred times, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, I saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> Alone, late at night? Mo, uh, this is serious. Uh, so, guys, before you guys tell me what you think, I just want to handle the biggest problem that I had with that video. Mm -hmm. It seems like South Africans do not understand one important thing. Guys, it is unlawful to share videos of people having sex unless they give you authorization. The fine on that thing is up to 150,000 or two years imprisonment. The people that were sharing it on WhatsApp, the people that were sharing it on Instagram, the people that were sharing it on Twitter, you guys committed a crime today. That's all I'm gonna say about it. <laughs> I mean, Can here's the other thing, okay? Prisons are supposed to be a place where people are rehabilitated. You've committed a crime, you go in there to serve your time for mm. all the wrongs you've done. Mm -hmm. So when we see videos like this of prison warders and inmates having sex, it creates a completely mm. disturbing picture about what is happening in our, well, not so correctional service facilities. Because, I mean, if that stuff keeps happening, I mean, one has to wonder, you know, are we living up to the idea of correctional service? What is going on in our prisons? You yeah. know, we can handle the videos of people singing, uh. you know, but this, oh, this is a different song altogether. Um, I think for me, the issue here is, is, is kind of the blurry line of consent. I think mm -hmm. when someone's in a position of power, like a warden is, uh, it then speaks to whether or not the prisoner has that much consent, whether he was, uh, felt like he had no choice, um, coercion. And I think also he could have been manipulating something. He could have been like, oh, I want this, I want that. But for me, power dynamics are also are always really important when looking at a mm -hmm. sexual relationship because I don't know if you have that much consent when you're in the position that is not of power. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then you've got to ask yourself, with everything that happens in prison, clearly there's criminal activity that happens in there. Mm -hmm. Clearly inmates and warders are doing things, you know, favours in return, quid pro quo, help me do this, I'll help you maybe escape prison, mm -hmm. I'll help you do etc. I'll, I'll, I'll try and make life easier for you in prison. It is just a really disturbing situation what is going on in there and yeah. we condemn it fully um <laughs> speaking of all things problematic and even matters of consent hashtag sitelo was making the rounds on the timeline after dj and influencer sitelo strozi made her relationship with her boyfriend andy lempisani instagram official so sitelo caught the wrath of twitter after the twitter fbis and they do wonderful work they did some calculations and they came to the conclusion that sitelo is 27 this year making her roughly seven years older than her 20-year-old bae. Mm. Yo, we got to applaud 
Angie Mutecha for the sterling work that the Department of Education has done in making sure that people can do riveting maths. And let me tell you, the plot <laughs> twist had Twitter up in a frenzy. I mean, this led to, you know, um, the trend actually becoming hashtag Rstelly. The fact that Andile, two years um, ago, had a child with Sitelo. The child is obviously now two, which effectively means that he should have been about 18, maybe minus a couple of months, and she was 24 when they became parents. I mean, wow. Yeah, I think, again, I mean, with the conversation above, I think there's such a blurry line. I think it's so weird, first of all. Grooming is obviously, for me, the topic at hand. I did see this tweet, which I think summarizes my whole thing, so I do want to bring it up before I get into more of my commentary. But Chat with Chalke said, the whole Sotelo and Andile situation is proof of how much black South Africans have normalized predatory pedo behavior in our society. We think, just because we saw old men date our friends in high school, that it's normal. It's not. We need to unpack this rape culture ASAP. So yeah, I do think that coming to a situation where even if people want to write, oh, it was legal age or it wasn't legal age, the whole point is that this was a teenager and she was an adult. And I think the person who's wrong in the situation is obviously Stello because you can't look at a child and think there's a relationship there, um, no matter how old they are. The problem here, Liseho, first of all, if we were sitting, just you and I, I would say I get it. I understand the concept of grooming and I get how problematic it, and it can be. It, it is, however, problematic that we are always on Twitter and we have these conversations because we're all liberals and we understand, we talk down on people. The conversation that we should be having is to go and actually speak about what grooming is. Because if you go to my township, where I grew up, you do find 18 year, uh, 18, 17, 18 year old boys dating 21, 22 year olds. It's a thing that keeps on happening, you know? And it, it, it's a culture that's there, but whenever we, we confront ourselves with these conversations, we don't actually speak on them, we speak at the people, and that's why people still don't get these things. That's why when you go to townships right now, people are still playing R. Kelly because they don't understand exactly what he did wrong. Some people do understand, they just don't care. Mm. Um, maybe. I mean, you, you raise some valid points, but one of the other things we have to perhaps uh, factor into this is, you know, looking at Andile and um, Sitelo in terms of their own social context, their backgrounds, you know, their families. I mean, Andile comes from a, a pretty well-off family, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying that she's, she's after the money, mm. but I'm just saying that he may have been exposed to so much mm. in terms of life experience because of the access that he has and the family that he comes from, mm. that she might also feel that maybe she's at the same level or maybe this is something that she aspires to. It doesn't make it correct to be doing certain things, mm. but I think it's important to understand the other factors um, surrounding this and even her own background. We don't know what her maturity levels are. Yeah. We don't know the kind of company she keeps, the yeah. friends she has. So I again, I mean, like, uh, you're going to go that young. There, there are certain things you've got to consider. I do think if we, this was a man who was 24 and a woman who was 17, 16, we wouldn't be talking about his maturity and trying mm. to explore the background of everything. I think we normalize this because she's a pretty woman um, and because she's a woman. I think it is completely out of order and it's borderline. borderline we can, guys, we can actually talk about this the whole entire day, but we need a whole episode dedicated to this. <laughs> so the hashtag Prof Mahwala popped up on my timeline after the vice chancellor and principal of the University of Johannesburg took to his social media to share an interesting tweet in which he asked this question. Can an engineering graduate who completed a four-year degree in seven years possibly be a good engineer? The same logic applies to other disciplines. I'm just thinking how many years it took me to complete my studies. Uh, it should have been three years, but I don't know how long it, it eventually took. But you know what? His tweet, which has since gone viral, has uh, polarized views from scholars and students and I guess the general public. And they had a lot to say, including this. Muronwa Tapelo says, the assumption is the question of the, the assumption of this question is too scary to ponder. A degree certifies that one has successfully completed a qualification in engineering. It says he is competent to practice as one. Should we put competent versus good, cum laude versus no cum laude? I disagree. Mm. Another sentiment comes in from triple seven Stella underscore. Are you innovative, Prof? Since you're in academia, where's your rocket? Where's the car, the cell phone, anything? Get in, get in. You know, uh, take us in. to Mars, Prof. <laughs> <laughs> Atomic underscore Phenom says, I think Prof is simply asking, can you consider trusting a professional who took long to grasp concepts and eventually failed 
and repeated certain modules to obtain his or her degree. Hmm, what does that say about his competency in the field? I think it's a fair question to ask. That's according to that tweet. Anyway, so we're on the line and we are joined by Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Johannesburg, Professor Chilidzi Mahwala, to react to his tweet. Hi, Professor, how are you doing? No, I'm doing, I'm doing all right. I am quite surprised that this was uh, uh, trending. Really? But I think uh, the important issue that people are actually missing mm -hmm. is the fact that 35% uh, of the students who come to our university system actually never graduate. That only 30% of the people actually complete in record time. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, that can't be something to, to be celebrated. Mm. I think us as educators, what we should be asking ourselves mm. is that what do we have to do in order to make sure that our students actually succeed? Mm. Does it mean that we must uh, put more tutors? Does it mean that uh, the, the consultation uh, must be longer than what it is now? Mm. I think this is really what it is all about. If I can give you some of the facts. Um, the graduation, the dropout rate is almost twice the graduation rate. Mm. And we can't ask, accept that. We have to do everything within our power to make sure that our students actually succeed. Prof, Prof yeah. I just want to ask, um, there is, we're living in an era where mental health and um, we have to understand people like people's financial backgrounds. I think that the, a lot of people that were reacting to that tweet saw you just linking it to just academia and intellect. What do you say to those people that drop out because they've got mental health issues? What do you say to those people that drop out because they come from families who cannot afford? Yeah. Well, I mean, the statistics actually is quite interesting. Mm. You know, uh, if we were to agree with your logic, only people who can afford will be graduating. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. Our graduations, I mean, I can, I can almost uh, give you statistics. More than 70% mm. of the people who are graduating from the University of Johannesburg mm. are first time people to graduate from their families. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, those exceptions, and we have we have to, to create an environment to deal with those. Uh, here at the University of Johannesburg, we have psyched uh, specifically to deal with, with, with those issues. But I don't think uh, 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 mental health is, an, uh, is a pandemic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something very, very serious mm -hmm. that has to be tackled. Mm -hmm. And any university that, that does not have uh, systems to be able to deal with that, better create such systems. Well, so uh, to answer your question, I think... Uh, we can do more mm -hmm. and we should do more in order to make sure that our students actually succeed. Well, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, you've wrapped it up for us. May you have a great evening. Thank you very much. Don't move a muscle, because when we come back, we have Nundu Misoluhutso, who was shot twice during the Vets protest, and she shares her journey to recovery with us. See you after the break. on three. So guys, what did you think about the interview in the last segment? I think sure. for me it's quite surprising that his condescension and the and the dismissiveness of mm. the tone didn't really seem to change even with, you know, the stuff that you brought up about mental health and about finances. I felt I felt like he didn't really understand how harsh I just, people came off. It's so sad how we look, we see all these VCs that are sent to that level. I think there's something about academia that removes you from the human yeah. touch because we that's why we're seeing all these problems with all the vcs including the one at wits and yeah I, uh. yeah i mean the fact that he's saying that mental health issues are not a pandemic doesn't mean that it's not a serious issue mm. and it's because of that that some people you know don't take it seriously ignore it yeah. and i think it's a problem mm. you can't have people sitting in positions like that mm. saying things like that uh, uh, yeah, speaking of universities, um, you know, last week during the height of the Vits protest, student journalist Non Dumiso Lehutso, who was covering the protest, was caught in the crossfire and she shared these tweets. She said, I still can't believe what has happened to me today. The officer who shot me screamed, Balega, run. I ran and he still shot at me twice. I'm here asking myself, what would have been enough apart from holding my hands up with nothing else? 
Would that have stopped him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is absolutely frightening. And since the terrible shooting uh, and removing a whole rubber bullet, which was actually lodged deep in her leg, earlier today, Nondumiso took to social media with this update. Mm. Update. The doctors are predicting that I might need plastic surgery for one of my deep wounds. I've been stitched up now, but everyone has been recommending matunga uh, slash umklabelo to accelerate the regeneration of tissue cells. Have you heard it? Do you rate it? I've heard about it and I rate it. Nundumiso <laughs> Luhutsu joins us on the line right now. Welcome to the show, Nundumiso. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Right. No, no, so on the day of the protest, you were shot twice. Take us back to that moment. How did it all unfold? Like what happened in that moment? It's crazy. You know, even now that I think about it, um, I was just going to school on a normal day and mm -hmm. there was a protest outside of the venue in which we have our lectures in. Mm -hmm. And we went outside as student journalists, you know, we're curious and we need to write our own stories. So we went outside and we assessed that, no, this is a very calm situation in comparison to the usual Vitz protest that we used to. Mm -hmm. So we went and we wanted to see the placards. We wanted to see the emotion closer um, of the students who were protesting. And that's when I realized when I turned my back that there were three officers approaching mm. the students mm. and as they were approaching two of them were holding um, their shotguns their rubber bullet shotguns on their arms you know and the one one of the two was actually dispatching the stun grenade and he soon threw it into the crowd of students and everyone dispersed as mm. is usual mm. so we dispersed as well my colleagues and I they were in front of me and I was behind them and we were running back into, you know, the venue in which our lectures happen. And it's so crazy because the venue doors were closed and, mm -hmm. you know, we had to continue running towards the other entrances of the university. So when I turned my back, I realized that the officer who had thrown the stun grenade into the crowd was actually standing right behind me, holding the stun grenade in his hand, right mm -hmm. in his arms. And he said to me, Balega, Balega. So obviously, we're now accelerating the pace, you know, so we accelerated the pace. And as I was doing that, I glanced back and noticed him hoist this weapon up and shoot, you yeah. know, aim at me right there and then. And, you know, I was so confused, but I still continued running and I tried to take cover uh, at the underground parking of the Vitz University Art Museum. And... I walked back after I saw that he was safely retreating mm -hmm. to other places, but also still aiming that weapon at other students, other civilians as well, and shooting. But when I went back to the Vitz Art Museum, that's when I was told that actually you have been shot. And I couldn't believe it. I still <laughs> don't believe it. Wow. Okay, so can you tell us um, some of the gravity of the injuries? I mean, you've you tweeted that obviously you need some surgery. Can you please tell us exactly, you know, what the injuries are and what surgeries maybe they are referring to you? So I was I was shot. The one the one injury is on my right thigh at the back, and then the other one is on my right butt cheek. So you can imagine it's quite painful as I sit here and I try to talk to you, uh, to sit down, you know. And um, the one on my right thigh is quite deep. So the doctors did put you know their fingers through to feel just how deep oh. the cavity was. Mm -hmm. And I have it's it's extremely painful you know it's the most severe one and that's one that's the one that they took the rubber bullet out of mm -hmm. so um they have been going to the wound clinic as well and they've been saying that mm -hmm. the cavity the way that it is the tissue has so much tension mm -hmm. that it might not bind even though i have stitches on mm -hmm. so that's the issue is I mean, that the yeah. tissue might not bind yeah i mean that is so that's, that's, quite, that's quite intense and 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 i can imagine yeah. you know uh, everything that you've had to go through and all you want to do is just get an education and also be a productive person within uh, your student uh, setup. We are completely yeah. out of time, Nondumiso, but I know that you've gone through the most. We wish you well, a speedy recovery, and we hope that you'll actually take action against this because yes. the last time I spoke to you on my radio show, you were not quite sure... Yeah you know, what sort of legal avenues to take, but we encourage you to do that and really get some sort of justice in this experience that you've gone through. So all the best. Thank you so much. I definitely will. <laughs> Thank you. Bye -bye. So we are taking a quick ad break. And when we come back, Dr. Bay comes to us with her hashtag Ask Dr. Kanyele, brought to you by our BFFs at Vodacom and Discovery. See you in a jiffy. <laughs> Wow.
Welcome back, it's Ta on 3. Now imagine having access to your health practitioners at the touch of a button. Vodacom is dedicated to connecting you to the best health and medical practitioners with their cutting edge virtual doctor platform that ensures all your medical consultations are easier, more efficient and cost effective. Let's see what Dr. K is answering today. Hi, I'm Zanzi, and welcome to another informative consultation of hashtag Ask Dr. Kanyele brought to you by our BFFs at Vodacom. Now, we all know that COVID-19 has thrown everybody a curveball, and in order to protect you, as well as medical professionals from contracting COVID-19, we've decided to take all of our consultations online. You've sent through another question this week. Let's take a look. Hi, Dr. Kanile. I recently recovered from an asymptomatic COVID-19 infection. Would I still have antibodies in my system against the new variant of COVID-19? Thank you so much, Mutlatsi, for that question. That's a very good question. Now, we're not exactly sure how long antibodies, which are the soldier cells that protect you against infection, and particularly in this case, COVID-19, will last. Some studies have shown that it's about eight weeks, but maybe even three to four months. And that's why it's important that we always maintain safe social distancing and practice good hygiene measures. Wear your mask, sanitize, and wash your hands frequently. If you have any more questions, please contact one of the doctors or healthcare professionals on the virtual consultation platform brought to you by Vodacom. That's all from me on this week's installment of hashtag Ask Dr. Kanyile, brought to you by Vodacom. Back to the studio. If you are grappling with post-COVID-19 symptoms like our guest tonight, visit the Vodacom and Discovery virtual doctor platform to book your free online consultation and get medical advice on COVID-19. Now, cancer is a threat to our lives and Vodacom has committed to using its technology to help find treatment for a number of cancers through the Dream Lab app in partnership with the Imperial College. Mm. And just like that, uh, we are wrapping the show. And don't forget, Vodacom invites you to be part of the researchers by downloading the Dream Lab app for free and using your phone to power this research. And what's cool is that Vodacom customers don't use any data to help with this research. So download the Dream Lab app today and partner with Vodacom to help fight cancer. And just like that, we've come to the end of another edition of Tsa on 3. And catch Trending Essay weekly on SABC 3 at 6 o'clock for your daily dose of entertainment for me and the Dream Team. Good night, Mzansi. I'm off to the funeral. <laughs> oh my God. Bye.